My people, welcome back to your favorite You and I talk show with Louis Zuwachu. This week, my people, we have a great, talented actor. He's so busy, I have no idea how he made time for us. Stay tuned. All right, my people, thank you so much for being here this week. Viv Leacock, mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And I love what you're wearing. It matches on so well with what we have. Oh, well, yeah. You know what? <laughs> a lot of red in the air. I like it. No, I came by, checked out the studio, you know. You know. Right clothes. <laughs> and the hat. You like it? Is this for the winter in Vancouver? You know what? You know what? <laughs> yes, yes. And, and it's actually... Um, this is actually a part of, I have different pieces from different characters that I've played in the last little bit. So this hat is from a show I do called Louder Milk, and the character wears this hat. And this jacket is from a show called Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, and my character wears this jacket. So uh -huh. it's blue in the show, uh -huh. but I got one in this red. So mm. yeah. So did the stylist allow you to take it home, or maybe, are they going to find out by watching the show? They might find out. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that hat? <laughs> right here. <laughs> All right. So let's start by talking about Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective. That is such a huge thing. It's mm -hmm. on BBC. Yeah. It's on the U in the UK. Yeah. It's coming to Canada. It's coming yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Like this is huge. Yeah. yeah. How 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 did you get the part? Um, interestingly enough, the um, the casting director in town, a local tech casting director, had been trying to put together the show for months. They basically cast the entire season um, before they ever shot the first episode. And that's not usually how episodic TV is cast. Usually they'll cast per episode, right? So um, so I had heard about the show months before I ever got the part because friends of mine were auditioning for the show. And I was like, how come I'm not auditioning for this? <laughs> What's going on? How come I'm not? So I, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I was just, no, they'll bring me in. Mm -hmm. And uh, two days, three days before the show was set to start filming, I got an audition. Wow. And you'll sometimes get a same day audition, but it's very rare. Usually the agents and the casting people, they'll give you a day or a couple days to prep the material before you go in. But this was, can you make it in, <laughs> in, in an hour? I was like, um, yeah, okay. So literally, uh, I didn't have a lot of time to prep. And uh, the character I play is kind of, um, <laughs> He's uh, the, the, the group that I, my character belongs to is called the Rowdy Three. And my guy, Grips, is the muscle of the group. And uh, he doesn't actually say very much. He's very quiet, <laughs> but he, he hit, likes to hit people. And, um, <laughs> um, but the rest of the group are like, they're crazy. These guys are off the wall. And so I, had, I just took a chance and decided that I was going to go in and do the audition cross-eyed. No way. <laughs> so, uh, so I did this <laughs> when I went into the audition. And uh, yeah, I got the part. And thankfully, I didn't have to do that while we were filming. <laughs> you would've showed, I would've showed up today and be like, Louise is so perfect, so thank you. <laughs> I would've been like that. So thankfully, I didn't have to do that. So do you have to stay cross-eyed in, in the show? No, okay. thankfully, they didn't. <laughs> no, they liked what I did in the, on the tape, but they didn't make me do it on the show, thank God. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And once you auditioned, how long did it take for you to hear from them, you know? I auditioned and heard from my agent the next day that they were interested and then landed the part the next day. Wow. So two days later. Ah. Got the part so and beautiful. Five, five days later, we started filming. So where are you filming and how is it going? And like, how, how is the, uh, the feedback so far? Not oh. a lot of people have seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's aired in the U.S. 
And we filmed everything in Vancouver, but the show has already aired in the U.S. and, uh, and is, is coming to Canada soon. Um, and the reception has been really, really great from the fans. Um, so Douglas Adams is, uh, is, the, uh, is the author of the, the books that the show is based on. And he, he's a very, very difficult author to adapt because of the way he writes and how incredibly detailed and quirky his characters are. And a lot of, a lot of other productions have tried to, to adapt his material, but it's difficult, but the, the creator of the show, Max Landis, he just, he just gets it. He gets it, and he's put together a show that fans and critics love. It's, a, it's an amazingly fun show to be on. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. I can't wait for the whole country to see it. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I may have some, seen some sneak stuff, you mm -hmm. know? Insider yeah, stuff. A couple little <laughs> clips. <laughs> I can't wait for the whole world to see it. All right, so we'll just take a short break and come mm -hmm. back and talk about your whole work. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back with Viv Leacock. So you're so busy. You've done so many great things. Mm, and you. then we're going to see like a, a clip, but this is a clip of your old work. Yeah, you, this is from Since Wally. that time, you have done on so much work. But we can see the clip, and then we can tell people what was happening in yes. the clip. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's see and then talk about All it. All right. <laughs> I like that. It's heavy. Yeah, yeah it's really heavy. That's good. Yeah. What you think? Uh, how much for this badass sucker? Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. Special today, baby. Okay. Special. That's right. Do you have anything for like a hundred? Hundred dollars? Yeah, like a hundred bucks cash. Right, look, this is my but, uh, own personal drop piece. Okay, this is thirty-eight special. All right. See that? Yeah. Now, that was cool. Clean. That's good. You do that in front of someone, that scare him enough. You got that pink grip, man. Yeah, that's the pink. Yeah. I'll be back for that, uh, that gold one. You gonna become back for it? That was nice. All right, I'm gonna put that aside for you, man. All right, I'm about to make some money. All right, don't Gotta tell me. Rich. I don't want to know the details. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> ah, <this is> so <laughs> much fun. Ah, so much fun. Uh, what kind of characters do you like to play? I was reading about you, and you started with Eddie Murphy. You started yeah. in comedy. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, um, stand-up comedy is my first love, and it's it's what I was pursuing uh, when I was quite young, actually, um, like 18, 19. That's what I was going after. And my older brother Richard, he's an actor as well, and um, he is always trying to get me into acting. You should act. You should act. You should act. No, no, no. He probably saw the talent before he, you saw yeah, it. Yeah, he he he. You know, he's 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 such a he's such a great older brother in that he saw that and he really nurtured that and was trying to have me, you know, do something with it. And I was like, no, 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 no. I want to I want to be a stand-up comedian. That's what my first love. And cuz our dad is actually a very naturally funny guy. Super funny and at parties my dad is entertaining anybody, everybody. So that's what I was aspiring to be. And um well, I watched my brother do the acting thing and he was great at it. Had a lot of success uh and I watched him do that, but I was like, that's not for me. Uh, so I did stand up for a couple years, and not too long after that, the audition for I Spy came up, and I was like, Eddie Murphy is <laughs> my idol. Yeah, and I was happy to be anything in that movie. So the the audition, the 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 character was a supporting lead character in the movie, and normally under those circumstances, there's no way some guy from Vancouver is gonna have a shot at that movie. But who knows, thank you, who was <laughs> listening and watching. I got a shot to audition for it and ended up landing the part. Wow. And, and my, actually my brother and I both landed parts on the movie. Wow. And worked with Eddie for four months uh, all around the, around the world and we really clicked, Eddie and I. 
And the very first thing he said to me was, you're funny. Wow. And I was like. Getting that from Eddie Murphy, the king himself. Yep. So I was like, <laughs> nobody can tell me I'm not funny. I'm funny for the rest of my life. My, when my wife, my wife gets mad, I'm like, baby, I'm funny. Eddie Murphy said, <laughs> Eddie I'm Murphy funny. said I was funny. She's like, that's not funny. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, so typically, uh, if I can in, inject some humor into the stuff that I do, I, I'll do that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I normally in life go for the joke mm -hmm. rather than get serious. But it, when it's time to get serious, I get serious. But I like, I like, to, I like to keep things light. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So exactly, how is it when you're funny and you've been in, in comedy and you worked with a guy who's so funny like Eddie Murphy to do like a more on the serious to do a side, thing? you know, and to go vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the thing with comedy is that um, comedy comes from drama, oh. right? And so a lot of times if you find people who are naturally funny, it's they've just taken something that maybe bothered them and they've spun it into something that makes other people laugh. You know, a lot of comics are actually very self-deprecating people. They make fun of themselves a lot. I don't do that too much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's just a way of dealing with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, for me, I do it because I like to make people feel good. I like when people are, are laughing and having fun. Mm -hmm. It's good for you. Yeah, it yeah. is, definitely. I like to do this on my show, yes, too. You know? I, I like know. making it about laughing. You have an infectious <laughs> laugh. You have such a great laugh. See, that's a superstar yeah. laugh. Eddie would be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up with Eddie, man. Uh, I need to be in a movie with Eddie I Murphy, can, too. I can call him right now. <laughs> for real. This is so interesting. So... Do you have like something out there that you're praying for, like a, a type of role now? Now that you have done so much things, do you have something that, like, yo, man? Yeah, you know, it was, it's interesting in that the thing that I was shooting for the most out of everything in my, for my career was working with Eddie Murphy. Wow. And it just so happens that it happened <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. And so it was... Uh, it was a strange thing. I was really like, I can't, wow. <laughs> Do I, I quit? Yeah, I was like, going on. Well, that I was easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, well, that, I showed I can do that. Yeah. But it was, it was interesting in that it's taken 15 years to kind of come back to a point where, where I felt that I was when I did I Spy. I felt like I was here, and then a lot of time in between, lots of the roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. But now with Dirk Gently and uh, a couple other shows, I feel like I'm back to that same level. But I know why I got I Spy when I did. Ah. It was to make me, and to, to let me know that I could do it through all the ups and downs. Uh huh. So it's as if life tricked you. It did. Because you didn't even <laughs> want to do it. No. It's like, I'm going to give him what he wants. Exactly. And then after that, you're going to want to keep coming back to it because yep. you've gotten what you want and yeah. you liked it. Yeah. It's ah. like it showed you can do it. Uh huh. And no matter what, I always had that to look at. Through all the years in between, it was always like, okay, is it ever going to happen again? I know I did it, so I could do it again. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm thankful that it happened when it did. Yeah. As much as I wanted to, of course, take off into the stratosphere when it did happen, uh, it, it, that didn't. That wasn't the way it worked out. Mm. Family came first. Yeah. All right, my people, let's take a short break and come back to that. <laughs> yes. Yes. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back still <laughs> talking to the very nice Viv Leacock. It's so nice talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> you too. If I could blush, I'd be blushing. <laughs> the advantage of being. Yes. <laughs> you can't tell when we're embarrassed. You have to look for the sweat. <laughs> oh, he's nervous. <laughs> so you have a family. Mm -hmm. You have children. You have a wife. Yes, yes. Do you choose projects thinking, okay, my kids are going to watch this, or you don't care, you know? Um, I, I definitely have had thoughts about certain projects that I was asked to audition for, where I did have to kind of go, oh, my kids might see that. I, I, there's definitely a lot of <laughs> projects my kids are not going to see. 
They're not going to see. Um, yeah. I'm happy in that. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of different um, uh, projects, and you know, some family, some you know, action, some comedies. You know, some right for kids, some are not right for kids. But there's enough. There's enough stuff that I've done that my kids can watch that they actually know what I do. <laughs> you know, there's some actors that their kids, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. they, they know that their dad is mom or dad's an actor. Yeah. But they don't watch. They they can't watch that stuff. Mm -hmm. Do they understand what you do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, my uh, our our daughter is uh, is in the industry a little bit herself, and so she really gets it. And she literally got it from uh, about six weeks old as a baby. I was making her laugh. <laughs> and usually, when babies laugh at six weeks, yeah. any mom will tell you uh, it's gas. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not an actual laugh. They're just like contorting because there's. <laughs> gas going through their system. Uh, but she was actually laughing. Yeah. I would do something, yeah. she would laugh, I'd stop, she'd stop. I'd do it again, she'd laugh. And we took a photo of this picture. And I knew from that point on, I was like, this little girl gets it. Yeah. And she, she is the one that's kind of followed my lead into the industry. And uh, My two boys are, are, are amazing athletes and, and uh, they're, they're funny in their own way. But it's my daughter that has that little thing that just, you kind of see it and go, oh, you got something there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, nice. So, yeah. do you hook her up with your agent, or does she have to find her own agent? Yeah, no. It's part of the benefits <laughs> of, of of having gone through and you know got the agent and all that stuff and worked for many years is that you know your kids can <laughs> they can slide in uh, to the agency and and she's just she's just really good so. Um, Nobody hesitated to take her on. Nice. Yeah. So how long have you been with your agent? And did you ever have to switch agents because you felt like, oh, this one is not doing a job? Or is it ever about the agent? Because here in Vancouver, I'm under the impression that it counts. Yeah, agents everywhere count. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough to have um, three really good agencies behind me. Um, through all my time in acting and switching out was never about like they're not as good as the next one it's just sometimes you need a different relationship at a certain point and it's just the way it works out now certainly people do come into a situation where maybe they feel that the agent is not good enough but that's, that was never the situation for me. And I, I'm still good friends with anybody that was an agent. Mm -hmm. uh, but so did the next one have to like, kind of snatch you from the previous one, or how does it go? Uh, well, the first agent I had, um, I actually walked away from the industry for a, for a long time. I started when I was 17, and at the time, the roles that I was auditioning for were very stereotypical, and they were, I just, I. I just couldn't put up with a lot of the roles that I was going out for. They were bothering me. And I didn't want to portray black people in a certain way, and so I, I walked away. And I, I walked away for seven years, wow. actually. And uh, yeah, that's in the, I did stand up in that time and did a bunch of stuff. And I worked with kids and special needs kids. I did a bunch of things. But acting kept kind of coming back around. It kept calling me. And when I came back into the business, I got my second agent. Um, it was kind of like, a friend of mine was with the agency and he's like, you should meet them, you should meet them, they're great. I did and we clicked and I was with them for 10 years. And um, still good friends to this day. But uh, yeah, at the, but the time that I switched to the agent that I have now, uh, Natasha Trisco, um, <laughs> um, uh, it was just the time, the timing was, presented itself. And, uh, and uh, same with, I have a manager out of Toronto, uh, Daniel Abrams at OAZ and, and, and same thing, just, Good people come your way, and you kind of assemble your team and move forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And how is it working, you know, out of Vancouver mm -hmm. versus you know you have a manager in Toronto? You could have worked out of Toronto, or you could go, you know. Yeah, Toronto and Vancouver are very different depending on your ethnic origin, um, because there are a lot of people from the West Indies in Toronto. This was my this was my personal uh, view on it. This is not, I'm not saying this is the thing, but uh, the casting directors are kind of the the first people that that they'll look at the breakdown for a character and then they think in their minds, oh, this person would be good for this part. Mm -hmm. Now the agents in town are 
showing them, how about, how about this person? How about this person? How about this person? And the casting people have to go, from what I know of this person, yes, they would work. And what I'm seeing works for that description. Now, that comes down to a very, you're going to get a personal set of beliefs that actually come into play. Now, because the, just the population base in Toronto is very different than it is in Vancouver, what those casting directors think about when they see a breakdown for a character can be different in Toronto than it is in Vancouver. Just in the fact that there's like five brothers in town. Yeah. <laughs> Versus Toronto where like yeah, 500,000. 500, and, so, yeah. and so someone here might not think about me being a dentist because they've never seen a black dentist in Vancouver. But someone in Toronto might go, yeah, I have a black dentist. And that's just, that's just the way it is. It's just like, that's just population. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not to say that anybody is uh, you know, not doing their job. It's just, that's just the reality of where they are, so. Very nice. All right, we're gonna take a short break and come back, my people. <laughs> with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwacha.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. This is our last segment with Viv. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for young people who are watching you and they would love to eventually do what you're doing wow. and also go as far as you have gone and be so busy because being busy as an actor, that's when you know somebody's actually working. Yeah, it's actually, you know it's working. Mm -hmm. You know it's working when you're busy. Um, my advice is kind of interesting because Eddie Murphy had some advice. Oh yes, let's hear it. And Eddie's <laughs> advice was very interesting. It was, it was don't take anybody's advice. That was, oh. that was his advice. <laughs> And the reason he said that is because he said, you might need to go right, right? When you come up to the fork in the road and someone's telling you to go left and you go left because you're listening to someone else, even though you know you're supposed to go right. And then you have to take the long way around. And it's the, the thing about it is, I'll, I'll, I'll use this example. When I audition and I do what I want to do in the audition, and I do that and they say, thank you very much, and I walk away. I can forget it. I can let it go because I did what I wanted to do. If someone takes my choices away from me or they change it or what, and I end up doing that and I'm like, mm, I don't, I, I can't forget it. It doesn't let, I don't let go of it as easily because it wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So I can, I'm fine with crashing and burning if as long as it's my own decision. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I can live with that. Yeah. But if somebody else is telling me what to do all the time, <clears throat> then you, what ends up happening, you end up second guessing yourself. I know why I'm here. It's because I've done what I've done to get here. I don't have to consider, I have to call up people before I have an audition. Should I do this or should, I don't have to do that. I certainly, I go over auditions with you know, another actor all the time. I make sure I'm prepared, but I, I always end up doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I can, I can live with it. I can live with the consequences of them saying, no, 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 we don't like that. Okay, that's fine. That's what I gave you. That's what I try to do. If you think I can do it differently, know that I can. I can do it differently. But if you, if you think, uh, no, no, he's not the right guy, that's fine. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. But if I don't do what I want to do, that's, yeah. a, that's a tough pill to swallow. But that's, that's very hard because most people, we want to blame somebody else. Yeah. So yeah. When, when you take advice, yeah. then you could be like, you know, my mom told me yeah. to do that. It's her fault. Yeah. That's why people blame alcohol. They drink. And it's like, ah, the reason I fell down the stairs is because I was drunk. No, you're just silly. That's why you fell down the stairs. No, um, no it's... it's uh, the, the, ultimately, you have to listen to yourself. In, in the, the, this business, you have to really be solid with the decision, decisions you make because you have to make a choice. That, more than anything, you have to make a choice. When you're doing a scene, like with Dirk Gently, I decided to go in cross-eyed. <laughs> That's crazy and because the, the character doesn't say that it's no, cross-eyed. No. But you yourself, you decide to go in cross-eyed. Like, what is going through your mind? And how does somebody make those choices, you know? 
I think you, you just have to be fearless. You have to kind of, you have to make, you have to make bold choices. You have to, you have to, I always think about doing what other people won't. That's what I think about doing. And it's worked out for me. It's not, it's not, it might not work out for everybody, but it's definitely a, a, that's the path that I follow. Yeah. yeah. So young people, all of us, they should just feel confident. Listen in here. In, in here. This will tell you. Your gut always knows. I, I say this to friends all the time. So what is it? You feel something in your stomach? Yeah, because people yeah. talk about gut yeah. all the time, but it's not really clear. Like, what you, are you feeling? You know, <laughs> just, a, just, a, just a, I guess, an innate kind of sense of, like, that's the way I should do it. And, and, and I, I'm honestly, I, I honestly believe that you'll be able to live with the consequences of doing what you chose to do rather than what someone told you to do. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just... Like I said, it's just the way it's worked for me. Mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of let stuff go when uh, I go, no, that's the choice I made. Mm. I decided to do that way. And if they don't like that, then I got to live with it. Mm. So know. we have like 60 seconds left. Mm -hmm. What about looks? Is it oh, yeah. women were always worried about looks? Do, do you have a, like, how do I look? You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a look-based industry. So, so you know, uh, uh, I'll put it this way. I, I walked in for an audition once, and the character description was why I was there. My agent did such a great job of looking at the, at the ideals of the character. But his physical description? <laughs> not me. He was Caucasian, 300 pounds, redheaded. I am neither of those three things. <laughs> but, so, but when I walked into the audition, the guys that were there, they were like, what are you doing here? They literally reacted like that. But she saw in me the virtues of the character that were written down on the page. And when I walked in, I presented an option for the production that they hadn't thought of, but eventually went with. Because I did, I was like the guy. I just physically wasn't like him. Wow. So looks are hugely important, but sometimes you can change their mind. Mm. Oh, babe, thank you so much for thank being you. here. All <laughs> right, my people, be confident. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs>